The government has ordered a special review into the NHS Trust, which treated the mental health of the man who went on to kill Barnaby Webber, Grace O'Malley-Kumar and Ian Coates in Nottingham last summer. Well, as you can see, Barnaby's parents, Emma and David, have joined us uh, here in the studio. But first, here's Michelle Morrison with a reminder of this tragic story. A talented and passionate cricketer, Barnaby Webber couldn't wait to play for his university's team. Described by his family as a beautiful, brilliant and bright young man, his life was cut tragically short. The 19-year-old was stabbed to death last June alongside Grace O'Malley Kumar as he walked home from a night out. Grandfather Ian Coates was also killed during the rampage and three others seriously injured. Valdo Calacani will now be detained at a high-security hospital after his manslaughter plea was accepted on the grounds of diminished responsibility, a decision that's left families of his victims outraged. The killer was already wanted for assault when he committed these attacks. Nottinghamshire police say they should have done more to arrest him. The families of the victims now want an inquiry to figure out how Calacani slipped through the net. The trial may be over. Their painful search for justice goes on. And Barnaby's parents, Emma and David Webber, are with us now. Oh, morning. Hey. Morning. Well, morning. Good morning. And I know, Emma, as you watch that, it is still a shock, isn't it? Yeah. But it's about your son. Yeah, I can't believe that we're that family. Um, that this, this has happened to, shouldn't happen to any family. And it's still really hard. It's really hard to see his photograph yeah. and his, his face. You've... But we're here, so... Well, you've, you've, you've brought in some, some photographs that haven't been seen before in public. Yeah. yeah. When he was uh, a little boy. Yeah. We'd just see these, we'd just play, play these in. These are lovely pictures. Thank you yeah. so much for bringing these in and showing us this morning. How old is, how old is he there? Oh, that was that was in Turkey on holiday when he was <laughs> nine months. <laughs> he's a sunny, sunny baby, wasn't he? Yeah, he was quite grumpy a lot of the time, but he was actually <laughs> he was smiley there. Yeah. Oh goodness oh, me. <laughs> this month would have been his twentieth birthday. Yeah, it would have been. And uh, what happened in June last year <laughs> it horrified the whole country. Yeah. Um, various reviews have been announced into what happened. Mm -hmm. It's not enough, is it? No. I, I would say it's a, a little toe in the water. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see the evidence of effectiveness of reviews. Um, there have been countless reviews for countless tragedies and horrors over the years, hasn't there? But lessons have been learnt, but I'd like to see the evidence of that. I think that we have to now come out and say this needs a full, proper inquiry. What's the greatest injustice that you feel? Oh. Uh, <laughs> where do you start? Where do you start? <laughs> I suppose it's just being the manslaughter acceptance is a huge insult. Because, to be clear, when he was arrested after these, these killings, yeah. uh, he was not assessed mentally, no. was he? No. no. There was absolutely no evidence at the time, in, 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 the, in the hours and days after the, the murders, that he was mentally ill. No. No. Which is why it wasn't assessed as murder. Mm. And the CPS accepted it was manslaughter due to diminished responsibility. Mm. The question you must ask yourself is, did he have diminished responsibility at the time of the attacks? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where, to go with, where to go with all of that? He, um, he was in custody... Um, for about four or five days. Mm -hmm. And we asked for confirmation of what mental health assessment and treatment he had, assuming there would have been some. And we were told that he was seen by... We have all of this as backed up emails, so I'm not speculating. He was seen by um, a paramedic and a healthcare professional, which was a nurse. And those were largely to assess his fitness for interview and to treat the... Whatever happens when you're tasered. I think they have to remove things. So that was that. Um, he was then moved to Nottingham... Um, prison. Mid-July, he had a mental health assessment, but it's really, really important to stress that that assessment was a report for the defence on his mental health. Right. There was no treatment or anything offered then. It wasn't a person seeing him as a mental health professional to help. And it was a month after? And that was a month beginning. after. Hmm. 
and, and that was for the defence. He'd already had his, his legal team um, appointed by then and who'd been briefing him. So he was held in Nottingham. Then he got moved to Manchester prison and he stayed in Manchester prison until the beginning of November when he was moved to Ashworth Secure Unit. Mm. The, the CPS um, forensic expert, Dr Blackwood, this is dates we've been given, was appointed in August and he physically saw him on the 14th of November to carry out his five-hour meeting stroke interview with him. However, to our horror, we found out, once we challenged the, the decision to accept manslaughter, we wanted the accountability for how was he acting on that night. We didn't dispute that he's mentally ill. Well, having a... But there was nothing. Sorry, all, I was, all on, I was going to... On. just Sorry, I do talk a lot. Not no, 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 no. I do. <laughs> but... but um, you have every right. Music. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice... No, no, it's our shout. But, but the, the, what really concerns us is it's not been delved into how he acted between... We sat through six hours of the most traumatic images and timeline of what this monster did to our beautiful children and to Ian. <laughs> and he... If from 7.30, from leaving St Pancras in London through to 5.30, 5am when he was arrested, we've seen his movements. They really alarmed us. There was no obvious psychosis. He, he encountered lots of other people, didn't do anything to them. We didn't even know he had a rucksack full of weapons with him. He changed his clothes. There's very little reference to the Slattinger bag that's gone missing. Um, he hid in the shadows for nearly 10 minutes waiting for our kids. And then he calmly walks away, phones his brother admits what he's done and then goes to the secure unit, has a face-to-face -face, um, interaction with the, the warden, doesn't attack him, but that wasn't even raised properly last week in court. And so for us, we're questioning, how can this be the actions of somebody in such a psychotic state? Well, those words, how can this be, I think have been resonating in many people's heads as this yeah. story unfolded. <clears throat> um, and just speaking as a father of, of four, I've got three boys, they're all, all over the news. Like, I'm sure so many people watching this now who have children, we, are, we sort of identify and we think, well, how would we feel? And it's almost impossible to imagine. But I'll tell you this. Along with with my awful grief that you have been experiencing and still experience, would be an incandescent rage at the broad facts here. We, we, we've, we've narrowed and focused on on aspects of it here, but let's just take a step back and look at the broader picture. This man was sectioned four times mm. in the space of three years. He was not taking his medication for schizophrenia. He was choosing not to take it. He chose it. not he to. He chose not to take it. They say he's resistant, but he chose not he, to. He assaulted a police officer, which is a very serious criminal offence, failed to turn up for the court hearing on that. Warrant was issued for his arrest, and that was months, months before he killed three people. What was going on in Nottingham? What also happened is, at the beginning of May 2023, so a month before, he also violently assaulted two co-workers. In his in his workplace, and he was on an agency. And he was workplace. dismissed from work. He was banned from yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, but the police did turn up. I think he wasn't at the workplace. Well, the However, question is, how many more warning computer? signs do you need? That, yeah. that, that's that's the bit that I think makes me the most cross because I know that the assistant chief constable said, "Well, it may or may not have." No, he said it's unlikely. It's unlikely he would have a criminal. Which is insane. That's almost irrelevant to me. It's that actually, if you've done your job properly, he would have been potentially sectioned again, you know, he's obviously a dangerous person. But the one in May is the one that really frustrates me because they knew who he was, they had an address for him. Why did they not go, do you know what, this is serious, he's got a warrant for his arrest. For his attack him now. During a mental you know, health intervention. And I don't understand why they just did nothing. You know, even if they didn't want to push charges or whatever it was, it's, it's, that's almost irrelevant to me. It's, mm. you, were, you, the police spoke to the employers and, and, and spoke to the people that were attacked, didn't go and get him. There were multiple opportunities Sorry. to stop him. Mm. They knew he was mentally ill, they knew he wasn't taking his medication and they knew he was capable of violence. Mm. It is astonishing mm. that he was free to be able to do what mm. he did. Then you have the police investigation mm -hmm. into what happened and you've already identified failings there and then you have the CPS decision to accept the plea of guilty to manslaughter due to diminished responsibility. Now, in that period of time, just a couple of weeks ago when we found out about that, we were told that you had been consulted. What did that consultation consist of? I, I, I would like to sort of openly in, invite Janine McKinney 
to come and meet with us. The director of the CPS for yes. the for not because I've read her. I've had read her response. We sat in court, and and were aghast at the opening statements from the CPS barrister last week. It was worded in such a way that it, that, that the acceptance of manslaughter was after consultation with the families. Oh, it wasn't anything but. We saw the CPS for the very first time, as I said in my statement, on the Friday the 24th of November, I think it, it would have been. The first so it was the weekend before the pre-trial hearing. They had actually asked if we'd have that meeting with them the morning of the pre-trial hearing. They presented a fait accompli, um, and Sanjoy and Sinead O'Malley Kumar were in the meeting. Um, I think Julian from 100 Families was as well, yeah. and they will attest to the fact that we were presented with that, yeah. with an overwhelming amount of information which we then had only the weekend to try and process. We went back over the weekend, were absolutely horrified and concerned. So the much lauded additional report to make sure they got it right was, was actually in response to, I guess, our kickoff, <laughs> for want of a better word. And all that the, the, the last doctor did was read the other three reports. Mm. Sanjoy, um, won't mind me saying this, but he sent... This is Grace's really, father. This is Grace's father. dad, yeah, who, who, bear in mind, is a forensic medical expert and served for the, with the Met for 15 years. He does know what he's talking about. He, um, he sent a detailed um, document to say, please make sure the next doctor addresses all of our concerns and not one of them was addressed. Mm. All he did was read the three reports. So we were... When I say railroaded, I'm, I stand by that. Mm. Because when they served the decision letter to accept on the... Um, 19th, 19th of December, of December, they served it simultaneously to all victims, to the perpetrator and to the court. And we have found out from legal advice that that normally you, as the victims, would have a period of time so you could raise concerns. David, between, they shut us down. between June, when you lost your son, and November, when you were told they were going to accept this plea, mm. presumably you thought this was murder. And that it would be treated as murder, we, and we, he would be prosecuted for murder mm. and convicted. Of Absolutely, murder. and I think that that, if if I'm honest, I think what we did in that period of time is, we didn't question. We just we we'd met the police relatively early on, and we were told, it, 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 we've got him. It's murder. We're going to go for whole life sentences. He's, you know, don't. It, 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 we almost walked out thinking, do you know what? They've got that. They've got that. We'll just leave them to do their job. We'll move on and we'll deal with... You know, we knew that there was failings before, but even, for, I think I said, but the, the arrest, you know, we didn't even... We kept pushing and pushing and pushing to find out about the warrant oh. and kept, kept getting told, the, oh, no, 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 there's no warrant. It was we, the initial we one. And we so were like, many different accounts really? of that outstanding. And, and it yeah. was just continual. And eventually, we just... That's when I think Em put the final email in saying, Freedom of Information Act, we want to know all these... And that's when they actually admitted it. Which... Is the more important issue in your heads? Yeah, there, there are two very distinct issues. There's the manslaughter verdict, mm -hmm. as opposed to a murder verdict, and you think that's completely wrong. And there's what we were discussing two or three minutes ago, the fact that he was out at all mm. yeah. and able to commit these terrible crimes. Which of the, those two issues do you regard as, as, as the most salient, the most important? For, for, from us, as a mm. justice perspective, it has to be looking at the charge for right. Rathstam, because I will never accept anything other than then Barnaby was murdered. Mm. And he was murdered with somebody that knew what he was doing, yes. he knew that it was wrong, and he did it anyway, and he's admitted that. He's actually said that. But with regards to your other point, uh, with, where, where do you start with mm. the failings? A review's nowhere near enough. There has to be an overhaul. There has to be a knife crime of... Travelling up yesterday, there's, there have been two more stabbings in and Bristol. deaths of teenagers yes. in Bristol. Yes. It, it's, it, it has... It, it's yeah. an epidemic. And it really has to be looked at. I know, so I don't really know where to begin. And also there's the whole Mental lack health, of support for, for, for victims and their families. I think that on the failings and, and why he was out, understanding that is not going to bring Barnaby mm. back mm. or give justice. But it may, if we have a full public inquiry, get to the bottom of why it happened so that it never happens yeah. again. Yes. On the failure to, to prosecute for murder and convict and sentence for murder, that would feel like justice. Appropriate justice is what we've mm -hmm. always Barney, asked for. Which yeah. I can imagine would come as nothing's ever going to alleviate the pain, <laughs> no. but it might feel like something was done to atone 
for the huge pain. Yeah. That is not going to change. There is going to be a review. The Attorney General can look again at the sentence, but that nothing can be done about what he was prosecuted for, can it? I, I don't know what can happen with... I think that's, it's the unduly lenient sentence. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the, it, when, when you hear uh, put away in a secure hospital for an indefinite period of time... I've, I've been advised through, through um, Julian Henry from 100 Families that the only person that's ever been put away properly for an indefinite, indefinite period of time is Ian Brady. Mm. You know, there's no other... Moore's murderer. Yeah. 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 So we've got this hanging over us now. What if he fully responds to treatment? You know, this is an intelligent man. Yeah. He's got a, he's got a, um, a degree in mechanical engineering mm -hmm. from Nottingham University that he only got in 2021. Are you saying that, that you are concerned that at some point he'll be let out? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm. And that hangs over you. And it course. hangs over you and it hangs over you. And, you know, I, it's... I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of pounds a year it costs to keep him in there. Mm. It's a lot in prison. But it's just insulting that he's in hospital now, so he continues to receive his benefits. Mm. He, you know, he continues to be treated and to, we, we, was, we were presented with when he's ready, if he might go to a medium secure unit and he would have an activities programme and proper therapy. You know, we're, we're left as, as, as the victims where all we get from the Ministry of Justice support, you can have 12 paid for therapy sessions and you're on your own. That's and this it. is... I've already been in contact with Alex to talk about this, um, because you've had your 12. It's... And how do you begin mm -hmm. to rebuild? My, my dad, who's a pensioner, and my stepmom, they weren't allowed to have any therapy because they weren't close enough. You, and, but what the is Barney's grandparents? Yeah. yeah. My dad, it's, it's destroyed them. It's, you know, and it's... They're pensioners, and it's... Therapy's expensive, but, you know, we want... <laughs> It, everything he's looking at. Goodness me. If you were, if you were friends it's of an mine, insult. if, if yes. I knew you personally, I know I'd ask you this question. H how have you found the strength to do this, mm. to fight? I think... Uh, and, and, to, and I have to say, to, to, to come across in such a level-headed, controlled way, it's extraordinary. I, th I think... It, it, I get asked this a lot, as, as you can imagine, um, and I think you just... You, you just wake up in the morning and you function through the day. Mm. And, and you get to the end of the day, and, you know, I think I said it in my statement, you get to the end of the day, and then, you, you know, you go to bed, and then, the, you know, that's the unfortunate time when the demons hit. Because... You know, that's what life prison, prisoners say. Yeah. That's how they cope yeah. with a life sentence, and that's, and that's what you've been had. given, isn't it? Yeah. We have that's been. what you've been given. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's so hard, you know, I mean, especially with, with you know, and I know... Um, uh, the the, the Amali, uh, Marley Kumar's are exactly the same with James, uh, and I'm sure with co the coach. I so say it's so hard when you see. So for us, it's Charlie, and you know we see him Barney's and he's, little brother. Barney's little brother. He's he he's just destroyed, oh, and you think he's you know I'm 52 years old now, so you know I don't know how much longer I've got on this planet, but I think he's got a long time and he's got a whole life he's got to make in front of him. Yeah, and I just. I just, I, I, I fear for him, and I, I, I just... He's such a strong character, but you just think... How, why how, should how, he do, you, how do you comfort him? <sighs> we I talked to him a lot. Yeah. He, he's, he won't mind me saying this. He, he's embraced having some therapy, mm. so he talks it through. Um, he's got the most amazing support network around him at his school and um, his friends. Um, and he... I, I have four heroes. I was thinking about this last mm. night. Two of them. Barnaby... Didn't stand a chance he was ambushed by this monster. Grace tried to save him and she could have run away and she didn't. She'll forever be my hero for that. Foolish girl, I'm angry and, and, and love her at the same time. But the other two heroes in my life are, are, are James O'Malley Kumar and Charlie Webber because they were brave enough last week to be in court. They were brave enough to do their victim impact statements and it broke my heart hearing what they had to say. James and when James crazy. said, yeah. yeah, James said, I'm an only child and I never wanted to be an only child. And, and Charlie's saying about going past Barney's room. And it, it, it gives you, I think that's what gives you the strength because I'm term, determined to make our house a happy house again. It'll always be different, mm. but he deserves that. Do you, do you ever find yourselves waking up in the mornings and thinking that fundamental question, why us? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you do, do. all the time. Yeah. 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 Sandra why, and I why, said that. Why, why did us, it happen? You know, what did we, we do wrong? We, yeah, what have we done to deserve... And I, th I think we didn't do anything wrong. Barney didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. The system did something wrong and one person did something very wrong. So... You would like to see the Prime Minister. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, you want a full public inquiry. So mm -hmm. what response have you had so far from Number 10? 
Well, first of all, we are seeing um, Keir Starmer mm. um, and team this afternoon and the, the Coates family and the Amali Kumars, so it's all of us. And we have had a response from um, the Victoria Atkins, Secretary of State for Health and Social. Can yes, who we will speak to. We'll I think we'll speak to her. Yeah. And also from, from Alex Jork's office to say that they are um, happy to facilitate a meeting today because they know we're here. Presumably, you would want to ask what the chances are of this individual being going back to court and yeah. being tried for murder. I want to oh. know what the options are. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not yeah. a. I don't want to come across as an armchair expert. We're not legal people. We're not medical people. Um, but hopefully, we're educated people enough to ask questions. Yes. Yes. Um, but all of these outcomes, even assuming that everything eventually goes the way you want want it to. It's all a cold comfort, as yeah. Susanna was it saying. I'm just wondering, do you, do either of you have any kind of a faith, or anything which is helping you at this at this point? Um, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's been tested. It's been very much tested because you you do wonder if there is um, if there is a oh, God. a God. Uh, then I think I don't know why he I think I let do. this happen, but a, gu a good friend of mine, because I said to her, I, God, as you do when something awful happens, yes. how could they let this happen? But she said, quite rightly, but yesterday, Emma, people were, people were dying, children were dying of famine and you, atrocities are happening, and, and that's yesterday, but you believed in God yesterday, but mm. today, because this has happened to you, and, so, and that, really, that really resonated yeah. um, with me. And when the, the Bishop of, of Taunton, that, that, that um, Ruth did Barney's funeral, she gave us... Um, a cross, didn't she? That she we've got one each, and Charlie's got one too. That comes from from um, from Bethlehem, um, from for, it's an olive um, from the olive tree. And I suppose I must have faith because I've got it in my handbag and I mm. carry it with mm. me. Well, you know, obviously, you're you're in the prayers of millions of people. Mm. Yeah. In the, you really are in their prayers. Yeah. I, yeah. The, and I would just like to thank all of the people that took time to um, write to us, to message oh. us, to come to vigils to donate to Barney's Foundation. Um, you probably don't realise how much strength you do get from that, and I'd like mm. to thank everybody. The, the foundation yeah. is in honour of your son, of yeah. course. What would you... What is it about Barney's spirit that you want to continue through that foundation? What was... Yeah. What was tell us about Barnaby. It's twofold, really. Do you want to... Yeah, I think it's, it, Barnaby was a... He, he, you know, I think it's been widely reported that it was his character. He's very inclusive. Um, person, uh, you know, one of the big things that came out of all of this is you suddenly realise that Barney had an awful lot of best friends. Mm. Um, and we've had some lovely s letters from parents where, even at university, he'd gone, he'd gone to university and, we, uh, you know, I, I literally read one the other day from um, one of his friends just basically saying, Barney got me through the first, first <laughs> term weeks, because yeah. he said, I, I didn't really want to be here, but Barney was incredible. He, he wouldn't, you know, he, he kept kept me up and so I think it's this inclusivity it's, it's making sure you don't leave anyone out he never did but don't he, judge he didn't judge anyone he didn't it wasn't Doesn't he wasn't how after rich the, you are good looking yeah, you are he didn't go after the cool he wasn't are. always the one to be the cool kid he didn't care yeah. if, you know he just he, he anyone from any walk of life yeah. if, if if he felt they were in need he would he'd be the one that would walk into the room and if someone was sat in the corner on their own he'd be going up to them yeah, and sitting did. with them and talking to them if he liked you he liked you yeah. But if he didn't, he probably wouldn't bother with you. <laughs> <laughs> he, so, Actually, through, you like most people. <laughs> yeah, we did. And, and through, through the foundation, I think what, we're, what we will do with that is um, twofold. We want to be able to support grassroots cricket clubs because mm. it's really hard to, to get kids into cricket, sometimes because it's expensive, so mm -hmm. we can help supply equipment and the like. Mm. Um, he but, loved but, playing cricket. Oh, yeah, yeah he was yeah. obsessed. But the other, the other side of it is, is it, it's quite a broad term, deliberately so, that it's, it's to support young people who are facing life challenges mm -hmm. and those can be physical mental emotional social and you know just and that would be maybe supporting other charities right. not necessarily just individual people well you're just in his you're, name your lovely boy sounds a remarkable young man in the making yeah. a remark and he has remarkable parents i have mm. to say and it's you. no really you're, you're an extraordinary pair and it's a privilege to meet you both oh, thank you so much thank for coming you. Well, good thank luck, you for good luck this afternoon thank with you your thank meetings you. yeah thank you good yeah. luck Onwards. good luck yes thank you very much thank thanks guys and nice we will um ask the health secretary about that meeting with yeah. the prime minister yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely which, which you want to yeah you also much. the open invitation to have a discussion with janine mckinney as well yeah if you'd like to meet with me